This week's story is brought to you by Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com forward slash story nori for your free audiobook download. Hello, this is Natasha and I'm dropping by with a story all about an uninvited guest on the pond where Prince Bertie the Frog lives. At first, most of the pond life didn't want to let him stay but then they realised that he was a very special guest after all, and they held a fabulous party in his honour. This is how I know all about it. The other day, Bertie asked me to pop up to the palace kitchens to see if I could find him a nice piece of cheese. As you probably know, frogs don't normally eat cheese, but Bertie is no ordinary frog. After all, he used to be a prince. Oh, Natasha, he said. Green slime for dinner is all very well, but I do so miss the taste of a nice piece of creamy cheddar cheese with just a little tang to it. Be a dear and see if you can find me some up at the palace. But before I reached the door of the kitchen, I heard a scream from inside. At first I thought perhaps someone had seen a ghost because there are a few of those hanging around the palace. But then I heard the cook call out, Rat! Rat! The door was open a crack, and a moment later a grey creature with a pink nose squeezed through the opening and scuttled down the corridor. It almost ran over my toes. I couldn't help myself. I said, Eek! Because although some of my best friends are animals... I can't say that I'm all too fond of rats. In fact, they are probably my least favourite creatures of all. Apart from cockroaches and spitting cobras. Oh yes, and I'm not so keen on jellyfish either. Oh, it's such an exciting story that I almost forgot to tell you about the free audiobook that you can download. So just hold on a minute while I tell you all about it. It's from our sponsor, Audible Books, and it's called Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Shiver my timbers! If you like exciting stories about pirates, you've simply got to listen to this book. And it's just one of 40,000. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash storynori or follow the link from storynori.com sidebar, you can choose Treasure Island or any one of 40,000 audiobooks. You can listen to Audible books anytime, any place, just like you listen to Story Nori. So drop by soon at audiblepodcast.com slash storynori and sign up for a free download. Now, where was I? That's it. Bertie and the Year of the Rat. There was such a commotion inside the kitchen that it didn't seem the right moment to wander in asking for a piece of cheddar. And so I went back down to the garden to tell Bertie and the pond life what I had seen. A rat inside the royal palace. Whatever next? When I arrived at the pond, I found that the birds, fish and amphibians who live there were holding a meeting. Sadie the black swan was speaking. And when she speaks, everyone listens, because she has what is called a very commanding presence. This is not a village pond, she said. It's a royal pond, and there is no place here for a common, vulgar creature who belongs in the sewer. A Canada goose said, Honk, honk! And all the ducklings and cygnets, those are baby swans, cheeped and twittered in agreement. Only Colin the Carp said, Oof, she thinks she's our queen, does she? It was only then that I noticed not far away, the rat was hiding in the weeds. His little pink nose was twitching, and I could see that he was frightened. To my surprise... I actually felt quite sorry for him. I say, 
we should expel the rat forthwith, said Sadie. And the waterfowl honked, quacked and twittered even louder than before. I thought the rat was done for. But then Bertie began to speak. Quiet, quiet, he called out. And gradually the noise died down. Now, Sadie is quite right, he said. When she says that this is a special pond, it is indeed a royal waterway. And nobody is a greater patriot for the pond than myself. But I think I know a thing or two about being royal. After all, I used to be a prince. And let me tell you something. First of all, a true prince never turns anyone away because of the way they were born. It doesn't matter if you are a peacock or a rat. All creatures are equal. That's the prince's code. Except for dragons, of course. We can't have them around the place because it's our duty to fight them. But that's a different matter. Now, let me tell you a secret. I might be a frog. But I was born in the Chinese year of the rat. And if a prince can be a rat, as well as a frog, then I say that rats have just as much right to live in a royal palace as anyone else. As it happens, creatures who are born in the year of the rat are rather nice. They are smart, ambitious and easy to like. And now, here's another thing. It just so happens that this year is the year of the rat. And do you know what that means? It means that rats are lucky this year. And what's more, to turn a rat away from our pond in the year of the rat would bring very bad luck indeed. So I say, let's hold a New Year's party for the Chinese year of the rat and let's invite our new friend to be our guest of honour. And everyone honked and squawked and twittered even louder than before. The little tadpoles did somersaults in the water and even Colin the car was so moved that there was a little tear in his eye. Sadie said, Oh, Bertie, you're so dignified. Now I see that it is truly gracious to be kind to all creatures, even if they are yucky. And at the party, everyone ate loads and loads of green slime except for the rat and Bertie, who stuffed themselves with a huge piece of cheddar cheese, which I brought down from the palace specially for them. And that's the story of how one of the most ugly and hated creatures on earth was granted sanctuary in the pond. Because it's a royal pond that lives by the prince's code, by the royal diktat of Bertie. There are loads more stories at storynoi.com and if you go to our page in iTunes, you can easily download several at once. iTunes also makes it easy to put our stories on an iPod or any MP3 player. That way, you can take them wherever you go. For now, from me, Natasha. Bye-bye!